week 46, day one, and we continue to journey along with the early church following Jesus' crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension to heaven. Today we're going to be looking at Acts chapters 9 through 11, and here we see the beginning of the church expanding beyond Jerusalem. If we go back to Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus tells those who are gathered there before he ascends that you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. The plan is always for the people to spread the word and to leave where they are. But the early church gathers in Jerusalem. That's where most people uh, were on Pentecost. They've been there. They heard the news. They stayed uh, and so forth. And so they've had this church uh, really gathered there in Jerusalem all of this time and really haven't gone very far. But the martyr of Stephen changes that. The climate is not uh, conducive or... um, Uh, beneficial, if you will, uh, friendly to these believers of Jesus Christ. And so we start to see people making their way out of Jerusalem, and with them goes the story, uh, the witness of who Jesus is. So we see in these chapters the beginning of that. Now, here is the thing. It's one thing to have those who followed Jesus for years and years go out and witness. They saw Jesus firsthand. But God, haha, God is not above surprises and doing the unexpected. And so when we read these chapters, we also read the story about Paul. Now, Paul, also known as Saul. Now, I want to real quickly mention that Saul did not become a believer in Jesus and then change his name to Paul. In the Roman world, um, and he is a Roman citizen, he would have used a name such as Paul. That would have been, um, how do I say that? Uh, That would be like uh, calling a a child Elizabeth or John or something like that. It It was a name that was expected among the Roman culture. But he also had the name Saul, which is probably the one that he was given at birth as a Jew. And because he had come to Jerusalem from his hometown of Tarsus, which is in modern day Turkey, uh, in order to study with um, one of the rabbis there and became a Pharisee, he probably used Saul when he was in his Hebrew context as uh, with surrounded by other Jews. So Saul and Paul, the names are actually uh, inter. inter uh, in, whatever it is, you can use one or the other, no big deal, same person. And if Saul was said or Paul was said, he'd look up regardless. Uh, So just keep that in mind. But nonetheless, uh, Saul, uh, because he's in his Jewish context, we'll use that for the moment. Saul, uh, when we last saw him, was holding the cloaks of those who were stoning Stephen because he believed in Jesus Christ as the Savior and, oh my goodness, had the audacity to say so and to live that out. Now, Saul has become a fervent uh, prosecutor of those who uh, follow the way, follow Jesus. And he actually gets permission to go up to the north to a town called Damascus, where he's going to arrest these Jesus followers, these Jesus freaks, and bring them back to Jerusalem for trial, presumably that they would also be stoned to death or killed in some manner. But as Saul is on his way, God does the unexpected and he stops Saul in his tracks. And we see it's a blinding light and he hears, uh, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul says, who is it? And he says, Jesus Christ, the Lord. And it's there that Paul understands, I'll now convert to Paul calling him that, that Paul understands what has happened. It's a a very immediate conversion, but it does not, because of his past as a Pharisee and as a persecutor of the early church, does not necessarily make it an easy path for him to change uh, in the midst of those people who had believed uh, in Jesus prior to that. But we see this story in there. We also see the story of Peter and Cornelius, because another thing that happens is that up until this point, Jesus who was a Jew. He he followed Judaism and his parents had also, and he was uh, coming from that context. And uh, Jesus was never a Christian. It's because we follow Jesus, the Christ, that we are Christians. But Jesus was always a Jew. Let's make sure that we've got that clear. And so all of his followers up until that point were Jews as well. But there were those who also heard about Jesus 
who were not Jews, who were intrigued by this truth that God came in human flesh and then sacrificed himself so that that anybody could be forgiven their sins and be reconciled to God. Peter, a good Jew, is now in a place where he has a vision. And he has a vision of a, a curtain or a blanket, if you will, coming down. And on it are all the things that Jews were not permitted to eat according to the law, the non-kosher things. And three times this vision comes to him and Peter protests, but I'm a good Jew, I'm not allowed to eat these things. But it's never about the food. It's always about the God's greater lesson for us. That the people that we would consider to be insiders, the people that we would consider to be worthy, the people that we would consider to be like us, they're not the only recipients. They're not the only ones who have access to God through Jesus Christ. Jesus came for everyone. And so we find ourselves going all the way back to Genesis, to the covenant that God made with Abraham. First, more uh, family than sand on the uh, on the shore and stars in the sky. We saw that pretty early on in Exodus, that he would have uh, claim to the land where he was uh, being nomadically uh, nomadically living. That God would give that to his descendants. Well, we saw that when they entered the promised land in the beginning of the book of Joshua. But the third promise of that covenant is often overlooked: that through Abraham's family. All the world will be blessed. What does that mean? Well, here we see that in true fashion. Jesus, a descendant of Abraham, we know because it's in the genealogy found in Matthew. It's found in the genealogy according to Luke. Jesus, a descendant of Abraham, is the Son of God, is God in flesh, Emmanuel. And it is through his sacrifice that not just the Jews, but all the world will be blessed with the opportunity for salvation. And that gets put to the test pretty quickly. Peter is seen now, this is not just for Jews, but for everybody. And the first ones who call upon him are indeed a Roman centurion by the name of Cornelius. And he and his family hear the word of Christ, accept it, and become the first non-Jewish followers of Jesus. Who in your life have you thought about, oh, they don't know Jesus, but, and you give an excuse why you shouldn't share the news of Jesus with them. They're not like me. They won't believe, da, da, da. The fact of the matter is, Jesus is for them also. And it is up to us as bearers of uh, the image of God and as witnesses to who Jesus has been in our own lives to share that with them as well.